pretend that there's no such thing as quote unquote being realistic because being realistic really just means setting self-limiting beliefs because nothing is realistic except for what you say is. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the nine categories that you want to go through as you're setting up your goals or your news resolutions. And before we dive into it, I wanna tell you this, I've coached thousands of people, tens of thousands of people in the past 14 years. And it's very common that people don't set up their goals correctly. And because of them not setting up their goals correctly, they don't accomplish their goals. And so I wanna go through with you the ways that I've seen people not hit their goals very simply because they just don't set them up correctly and they don't get attached to their goals. So that's what we're gonna go through today is how to actually figure out what your goals are and then how to get yourself emotionally attached to them as well. So the first thing I wanna say before we dive into it and before we actually go into the nine different categories is this. The first thing that is the most important thing is when you are setting goals, you have to be extremely, 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 extremely clear on exactly what you want in your goals. I just got done doing a live with a few hundred people that were on it. And I noticed that when I asked them, what is your number one goal for this year? They said stuff like lose weight, make more money, get a new job, have a better relationship. And while all of those goals are great and they're all beautiful, they don't really tell me anything. They're, if I'm being honest, they're vague as is really what they are. They're super vague. Like if you wanna lose more weight over this next year, if you lose one pound, one pound, you've hit your goal. But I'm assuming that if you wanna lose weight, losing one pound is not the goal that you have. If you want to make more money, if you make $1 more, you've hit your goal. If you, you know, have a little bit better of a relationship, then you've had a better relationship. So all of those are extremely vague. What the important thing is, is as we're going through these nine different categories, number one, I would get a pen and paper out right now if I were you. And I would, I would write down and pause me as much as you need to and pause me and pause me and pause me as you're going through this and take as much time as you need. This could, you know, even though this might be 15 to 20 minutes, this could take you an hour to go through. And I recommend that you take an hour to go through all of this. So the first thing I wanna say before we dive into them though is be clear because the more clear that you are, the more likely you are to, to hit it. So instead of saying, I wanna lose one pound, or I'm sorry, I wanna lose more weight. Say I wanna weigh 165 pounds, I wanna be 10% body fat. Da, 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 da. And I want you to print out a picture of the person who has the perfect body that you want to have. Make sense? So get very clear. The more clear you are, the more likely you are to hit that target. So the first category that I want to go through with you, and I'm going to help you brainstorm. So you can pause me when you need to, or you can just continue to go through this with, with me playing, is this, your career. So the first thing we're going to dive into as far as your goals go is your career. So if we're looking for the next year, for 2021, what are your career goals for this next year? Do you want to, how much, you know, how much, uh, how much of a promotion do you want? Do you want a promotion? Do you want to become assistant vice president? Do you want to become president of the company? What is it that you want? Do you want to get a $10,000 promotion? Do you want to leave your position that you're currently in and start a new job? Do you want to start a side hustle? What is it that you want to, do you want to own your own business? Do you want to make enough money in your business, in your Shopify store, that you're actually able to leave the current position that you're in. What is it that you want? And let's say that is your example, that you do want to leave your job because you have a Shopify store. Okay, well then what I want you to do is I want you to figure out exactly how much money you need to be at monthly in your Shopify store in order to leave your job. So don't just say, oh, when I, when I make more money, I'm gonna leave. That's not enough. I wanna know the exact dollar amount that you need to make before you say, okay, I'm done, I'm leaving here. That's what you need to get very clear on. So get very, very clear on exactly how much money it is that you need to make in order to leave. With the rest of your career, can you get very clear on every single bit of it that you want? So that's the first category we're gonna go over. So if you need to pause me, if you need more time, go ahead and do it, pause me, take as much time as you need, put on some good music, get a good cup of coffee, and just start writing down all of your career goals, okay? Number two, when we're going through different categories, is your financial goals. What are your financial goals for 2021? What do you want them to look like? How much money do you want to make? Don't just say, I want to make more money. Everybody always wants to make more money. How much money do you want to make? Exactly how much money that do you want to make? The funny thing is when you write down with a pen and paper exactly how much money you want to make, you're more likely to hit it because you've written it down. It's tangible. It's physical in this world. You can actually see it. You can taste it. You know that it's right there. So the second thing is financial. How much money do you want to make over this next year? Okay. How much money do you want to save over this next year? Why do you want to save that? Why is it important for you to save that? Because it's important to find out exactly what your goals are, but it's also very important to find out why you want to have those goals. So the second goals are financial. What are your financial goals? Go ahead and write them all down. Let's figure it out. Pause me if you need to. Number three, 
Your relationships, let's talk about your relationships. As we're going through it, first off, let's talk about your family. What do you want your family relationships to be like? Maybe you have kids. What do you want your relationship with the kids to be like? How do you want to show up as a better father? How do you want to show up as a better mother? Okay, let's talk about that. How do you want to show up as a better son, as a better daughter, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, niece, nephew? How do you want to show up in your family with the people that are closest to you? What would that look like to you? What's the most important? Write down all of your goals around exactly what it is that you want to create in your family and in your relationships. After we get off of family, and there's a reason why I didn't say spouse or significant other yet, is because now we're going to go into significant other or spouse. So maybe you're single. Maybe you want to get into a relationship. Okay. Why don't you tell me what that person looks like? What do they do? What are their hobbies like? If you're married, you know, how do you want to be a better spouse? How do you want to show up? What would make what would you need to do on a daily and weekly basis to be a better spouse this year than you were last year? Okay, maybe you want to take them out. Every Friday is going to be date night. Okay, you're going to take the kids, you're going to get a babysitter, and then every Friday you're going to have date night. Okay, cool. Write these down. What is it that you want to do? Instead of saying, I want to go on date night, what days? How are you going to do it? How are you going to make sure it gets done? Because if you don't put a plan down, it's less likely to actually happen. Okay, so you have a boyfriend, girlfriend. Do you want to get engaged? Do you want to break up? What is it that you want? Like, what do you want your, your relationships to be over this next year? Maybe you are in a relationship that's shitty. You know, that does happen. And you want to get out of that relationship and find someone who is better. Well, get very clear on exactly what that is. And then make sure you hide this notebook so that your significant other doesn't find that you want to break up with them. So that's the last thing as far as relationships go. If you want to go deeper into it, pause me right now. Go deeper into your relationships. Number four is health. Let's dive into your health. Do you want to gain muscle this year? Do you want to lose fat this year? How much exactly do you want to weigh? What do you want your body fat to be at? What do you want to look like? How do you want to feel? Okay, Would you, is there somebody who has a perfect body? Maybe what you do right now is you go on Instagram for the next 15 minutes and you just search and find the perfect male body that you want, the perfect female body that you want. You take a screenshot of that and you put it on the background of your phone so you see it every single day. You print it out, you put it in your, your closet, you know, on the, on the back of the door of the closet so you see it every single day. And so you see that, so it gives you something to work towards. So when you look at yourself in the mirror, you're going, I'm getting closer, I'm getting a little bit closer. And you celebrate those ones when you get a little bit closer. So how much do you want to weigh? How, what, you, what do you want your body fat to be at? What do you want your muscle mass to be at? You know, what's the body that you want? Maybe it's not anything around there. Maybe you want to eat healthier. Well, that's very vague. What exactly does that mean? What does eating healthier mean to you? Do you want to go vegan? Do you want to be pescatarian? Do you want to have less red meat? Do you want to eat more salads and less pizza? Less greasy food? No more bacon? No more alcohol? No more sugar? No more dairy? What is it that you want to cut out? What is it that you actually want to create? What do you want your health to look like? How do you want to feel? Maybe you need more sleep. What does that look like? How much sleep do you want? What time do you want to wake up in the morning? What time do you want to go to bed? What would make your, what would assist you in making better sleep, right? So you see how you can be very vague and say, oh, I just want more sleep, or I want to have better sleep, or I want to wake up earlier, or you can get very clear and start to make a plan around these goals. So number four is health. What are your health goals for the next year? Number five is materialistic. Okay, what are your materialistic goals that you have for this year? And one thing that I, that I want to cover, and I don't want to go too deep into it because it could be a whole other episode, is the whole mindset around money and the whole mindset, and I've had this mindset before, this is why I can talk about it, whole mindset of wanting more things is actually evil or wanting more things is negative, right? Because when I was younger, I wanted a mansion and all of, you know, house and Ferraris and Lamborghinis and all of those things. Then I got to the point where I was like, I don't really care about anything. And, and I thought to myself, if I want more, that's actually not a good thing. And the reason why is because I have enough. So then why would I want more? And then I realized that wanting something, and I've gone through ebbs and flows, is not negative. It's not negative to want something. It's not negative to want a house or to travel more or to get a certain car. It's not negative at all. For some reason, we have this idea that wanting more is selfish and that we're taking away from somebody else when we're wanting more. Like me going and buying a nicer truck is a waste because that money that I could have used to buy that nicer truck could have been used to feed the homeless or something like that. We've all thought this way, right? But you have to realize, anytime you spend money, it goes into a company. And guess what works for companies? People. And the more money that a company makes, the more people that it can employ. The more people it can employ, the more families that it's feeding. So you have to realize, anytime that you spend money, you are helping people. 
So I used to think, oh, was, you know, to, to want more is, is negative. And someone that really shifted my mindset on this, I have a, a guy that I know that's, that's a billionaire and he was in a, a bidding war for a house that was $25 million. We were having this conversation. And I remember thinking to myself, this dude has so many fucking houses. Why does he need another house? And I thought to myself, what a waste, right? Like I really had this feeling and some of you might have this feeling as well. Of like, what a waste. That $25 million could be so much good for other people if you were just to donate it. Like, I know he's not going to donate it, but if he did, it could do so much good. And then I had my perspective around this shifted when I realized if he's going to spend $25 million on a house, uh, you have to realize this house was massive and it had a massive property. So in building a $25 million house, there's the builder, there's all the people who put up the walls, all the people who put the flooring, the tiles, the painters, there's the people who did the landscape and the people who did the pool. There's the people that uh, did every single aspect, the air conditioning, the heater, every the, the lights, everything that goes into a house. People had thousands of people were probably employed to build this house. Maybe not thousands, maybe 8,000 people were employed in order to build this house. So by him spending $25 million, yes, that could be donated, but how many families are being fed because of the fact that he's paid $25 million for this house? Something to think about. So when I say this, and the reason why I'm going off on a tangent on it is because wanting something materialistically is not bad because just because you're spending money on something and you're receiving something doesn't mean that somebody's missing out by you spending this money. So I'm saying this because if you want a certain house or a certain car or a certain watch or clothes or whatever it is, there's nothing bad about it. Anybody who tells you there's something bad about it has a bad psychology around money. So what do you want? Write it down and act like you're four years old and there are no limits. There is nothing that you have to, oh yeah, but I feel bad if I'm spending this. No, you're four years old. Anything can happen when you're four years old. Any dream can happen. There are no limits. What do you want? Write it down with a pen and paper. Let's figure it out. So that's number five. If you need to pause me because you want a lot of materialistic stuff, no worries, put it down. Pause me. Number six is your personal development. What do you want your personal development to look like over the next 12 months? Um, the last live that I was just on a while ago, I talked about this. In the live, I talked about how it's crazy that we have so many different things that we budget for. Like, I know how much my phone costs every single month. I know how much my mortgage costs every single month. I know how much it costs for the pool guy to come out and do the pool every single month. I know how much it costs for landscaping. All that. I know how much all of these things cost. And I have a budget for all of those. And if I were to ask you how much is your phone every single month, you know. And if I were to ask you how much is your car and your car insurance and your house and all of that, your rent, all of those things, how much you spend on food, you know how much you spend on food. But if I were to ask you, what is your monthly budget on your own personal development? Nobody ever has an answer. And the reason why is because nobody ever thinks about this. But the best return on investment you'll ever have is by spending money on yourself. I've never spent money on myself and be like, ah, that was a waste, right? So the one thing that I would say is right now with a pen and paper, I want you to jot down how much you're dedicating to spending on, your, spending on yourself every single month. How much are you going to spend on yourself every single month this year? Yourself, your personal development. I'm not talking about going getting your hair done and that type of self-care. I'm talking about personal development. How much are you going to spend on yourself every single month? Write that number down. Hell, I'm going to even actually challenge you. Send me an email right now and tell me that number. How much is it? How much are you going to spend on yourself? Is it 100 bucks, 500, 200, 250, 1,000, 10,000? I don't know what it is for you, but how much are you going to spend on yourself? This could be books, this could be courses, this could be hiring a coach, this could be going to different places and you know seminars in order to improve. It could be getting licenses that you need to like get. Whatever it is, how much are you going to spend into yourself? And send me an email. Do it right now. Rob at robdial.com and say this is how much I'm going to spend on myself every single month. Make a budget. I'm serious about it. One of the things that people don't do is they don't take their, their spending on themselves seriously. So what does your personal development look like over this next year? Pause me if you need to. That's number six. Number seven is spiritual. What is your spirituality? What do you want to, how do you want to spiritually grow? For some of you, this could be religion. For some of you, this could not be religion at all. This, just because it's spiritual doesn't mean it has to be religious. So maybe you do want to go to church. Maybe you want to go to the, the mosque, temple, whatever it is you want to go to. You want to go to it. Ashram. You want to go to this every single week. Maybe that's something that you want to do. Maybe you, you're not religious at all and you're like, you know what? I want to meditate for 15 minutes every single morning. Maybe you want to um, journal every single morning. That's part of your spiritual development. Maybe you just want to be able to sit in silence and not have your mind go crazy. What does your spiritual development look like over the next year? That's what I want, I want you to figure out. I want you to dive into. Maybe you just want to feel more joy and peace. What does that look like? How would you experience more joy and peace? What's holding you back from that? Write it all down. Let's figure that out. So what does your spiritual development look like 
over the next year. Okay, number eight is your character. What do you want your character to be? How do you want to interact with people? Do you want to be more giving? Do you want to be more generous? Do you want to be happier, more peaceful, more joyous? What do you want it to look like throughout the course of this year? And the, the easiest way to think of this is if you were to die at the end of this year and people were standing up and they were giving your eulogy, what would you want them to say about you? What character traits? Oh, John, he always was this way. He was always so giving. He never was a person who judged anybody else. What do you want them to say about you? These are the character traits that you want to develop. So if you were to die, December 31st, what is it that you want everybody to say about you at your funeral? That is number eight. Pause me if you need to. And number nine, the last one, which is always one of my favorites, is experiential. What do you want to experience over the next year? What about traveling? Where do you want to travel to? Do you want to travel somewhere? Pretend that, you know, COVID doesn't exist. Let's say everything opens up. What do you want to travel to? You want to go to Hawaii? Do you want to go to Australia? Do you want to go to America? Do you want to go to New York? Do you want to go to Canada? Do you want to go to the UK, Europe, Italy, Amsterdam? Where do you want to go? You want to go to Africa? Do you want to go to Thailand? Do you want to go to Bali? Where do you want to go? Figure it out. Pretend that there's no such thing as quote unquote being realistic because being realistic really just means setting self-limiting beliefs. That's self-limitations on yourself by quote unquote being realistic because nothing is realistic except for what you say is. So why don't you just take those off and just do exactly what it is that you want to do? What do you want to experience? So you could travel to places. What else do you want to do? Do you want to go scuba diving? Do you want to get scuba certified? Do you want to go diving with sharks? Do you want to go skydiving? What experiences do you want? Do you want to do something fun with your spouse every single month? Like go and do, um, I don't know, a, a trip somewhere, even if it's just in the exact same state. You drive and take a trip somewhere. Maybe you start doing more of those, uh, you know, rooms where you have to break out of them and you do that. That's an experience. Maybe the movies you want to go to. What are the experiences that you want to have? Do you want to go to the beach, you know, every single month this year? Take a trip down there. What is it that you want to do? What are your experiences that you want to have? And so my goal for you is to listen to these nine things and to take 45 minutes of your time right now. Like, believe me, the next year of your life is going to happen. Hopefully we'll all be alive at the end of this year, right? You know, there's a lot of people listening, so there's a chance there might be somebody who's not going to make it. But hopefully you're not one of those people that's going to die this year. Let's say that you make it to the end of this year. You have 45 minutes you could spend with yourself right now to plan out this year and figure out exactly what it is that you want. These are the nine categories. I want you to put on some good music. I want you to find some coffee, find some tea, light a candle, go outside, go to the beach, do whatever the hell it is that you need to do in order to get into the right space. And I want you to figure out what your career goals are what your financial goals are, what your relationship goals are, what your health goals are, what your materialistic goals are, what your personal development goals are, what your spiritual goals are, what your character goals are, and what your experiential goals are for 2021. Because if you don't write them down, they're not going to happen. But if you do write them down, there's a pretty good chance that you're more likely to hit them. That is just a fact. People are about 10 times more likely to hit their goals when they write them down. How can I say this? Well, Here's the reason why. Because in the 70s, Harvard did a study and found out that only 2% of the people who were graduating with an MBA actually wrote their goals down. 10 years later, they followed up with those 2% of the people. And they followed up with the 98% of people who didn't write their goals down. And those 2% of the people were 10 times more successful than the other 98% of the people who did not write their goals down. So you are more likely to be way more successful, hit your goals and have the life that you want to if you just take a pen and paper and you write that shit down. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. How many times have you set a goal or your New Year's resolution and then completely forgotten about the New Year's resolution or the goal?